Welcome yes. back, guys. Welcome back. Okay, Andrea, hold on to that microphone. No, but it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. I just talk too much. Because uh, yeah, the guy at the end there, he can st he can start, but 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 Ivan will. Question. Ivan will do the last three minutes of questions. Yeah. Okay, good. Excellent. Our jury is here. They've got their papers. They're ready to judge. So let's welcome up our first startup of this final round, El Nav. Welcome. Uh, hello, my name is Herwe, and I've been a seaman for 30 years. On the open sea, ship mostly sail with the autopilot turned on, but to enter the port, the ship must go to hand steering. A maritime pilot embarks the ship, and steering is conducted by a helmsman via verbal helm orders. The most apparent problem is that nothing prevents a helmsman from putting the rudder over the wrong way. As a lesson on fact, the final nail in the coffin of Costa Concordia was the wrong helm 22 seconds before the impact. Monitoring helm order for misinterpretation requires a high level of concentration, which reduces situational awareness. We are fixing these problems with electronic device that combines speech recognition and data from the ship sensors. This artificial intelligence continuously monitors whether issued helm orders are clear, confirmed, and correctly executed. The speech recognition is trained for maritime English accents captured by a custom-made beamforming microphone. Different warnings come with the different sound signals for steering or course deviation, for helm applied on the wrong side, or for communication issues. There are currently around 53,000 large ships operating globally. We are also targeting the market of several thousand navigational simulators. The business model is strictly B2B. These competing companies are a partial overlap. IP patent application is in a national phase and trademark application is pending. We are a team of six experienced professionals with various sectors of expertise. Why now? The rapid development of speech recognition technology revolutionized the ability to filter out ambient noise. We are asking for 250K in safe instrument with 4 million cap and 20% discount. Helm model monitor solves the problem, which is considered unavoidable risk in the maritime industry. The cost of our unit will be around 8,000 US dollars. Do you remember what was the cost of Costa Concordia disaster? 2.6 billion. Thank you. Hey, thank you very much for the presentation. Maybe no. I missed it, but can you tell me a bit like the impact, like the sustainability in your company? Come back. The, yeah. the sustainability that your company has toward the environment, like the impact. Uh, the impact to the environment. Yeah. So basically, this prevents ecological disasters. So you can imagine only one tanker. If it prevents one accident, if one tanker. Can, can we like. Uh, uh, like, do you have numbers? Do you have estimation? Because at the end of the day, this, I get it. This is like predictive. Oh, You're copy that. Uh, so basically, uh, after one of the investigations of the marine accident that involved the Hersman error, Australian Transport Safety Bureau stated this type of not uncommon. And this is just Australia with very simple cost. So this type of errors are actually not classified. So you have to go to each country investi investigative body and check uh, all the groundings and all the collisions to see actually how are, how many are uh, because of the Hellsman error. So, but there are a lot because I know from my own experience. There are a lot, you're yeah. saying. Then you're going to come back with numbers. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, quick question. Um, the device, which seems great, how do you how do you sell it? How do you, you go to shipping companies? Or how hard is it? It's, it's very niche. It's industry. strictly B2B because you cannot sell anything to the ship. So everything goes through the uh, purchasing department of the company or through the uh, training set of the And what is the sales cycle, for example, if you want to sell this to a sh shipping company with 200 ships, for example? Okay, uh, so we're going to break even when we sell 120 pieces. Okay. Uh, with 100 <laughs> ships. <laughs> so yes, uh, there is a long way to that because the shipping industry is known as not really accepting easily innovations. So there is a long way to attend to all the maritime conferences and you know to advertise the product. This is this is just a procedure. It's challenging, but we like it. Thanks for the presentation. And the device itself, does it fit to any kind of ship? Come back with that. Does the device fit into any kind of ship? It is. Uh, you can install it on any type of ship because it's using the connectivity protocol, which was established in 1983. So. And the materials used for the device. 
materials used? Materials used, so uh, the microphone is custom made by the Fraunhofer. There are our partners in this, Fraunhofer Institute from Germany, uh, the uh, division from Oldenburg, which is dealing with the hearing, speech, and audio technology. And the, uh, the rest of the device is made by the Isaac from Denmark. But the material itself, is it plastics or? No, 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 this is, this is like uh, metal. This oh, is uh, okay. all uh, shipping grade. It's uh, the, actually the device is already tested for the marine use. Okay, so you did a life cycle analysis for the product? No, it's, it's uh, metal, metal or glass. Okay. <laughs> Uh, the price you said it was eight thousand dollars per unit. Yes, that's what we predict so far. Okay, and is it just like a one-off purchase, or is there a recurring revenue? Is there something you can charge consistently? Uh, so far, in a maritime industry, everything goes through direct sales. But we are planning to go direct sales to offer, and also subscription model. So that, that, that was my question. The subscription. What is there something that you can add as a subscription? Yes, to that? definitely. If we change a new type of microphone, so that we can, you know, exchange the old one for that. So we will offer because this is new technology. We will offer possibility that we upgrade for free. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Where is the production based in China? You said, or so uh, we are in split here. Oh, split. Split oh, in Croatia. Sorry. Yes. Yes. Andrea has a question. He's from Genoa, which is a famous shipping shipping city. Thank you. Um, so you said that you're going to break even with uh, around 100 of these devices. Around 120. Units. How? What's the plan for selling thousand of them? Correct. What's the plan for selling thousand and thousand of them? How? How are you going to scale? Plan? Well, <laughs> that's that's a good scenario for us. Yeah. Uh, that's what you have done. That's yeah. So basically, <laughs> we plan that uh, after three years we're going to be profitable in this because you can expect you know gradual sales it doesn't go straight away. How you are going to reach that point? I mean, what is your strategy? Like your commercial strategy to get there? Commercial strategy. So basically, we are raising 250 cases now, only four million cap. So that will be something like uh, 11, uh, 11 percent shares at the moment. So on the next pricing round. Next investor round, yeah. We go. Okay, thanks. You guys want to? We're good. Thank you. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Elna. Thank you. Okay, first one's up and gone. Notes being made. Scores being written down. A lot of thought going in. Look at their brains working. Or they're making plans for the weekend. I'm not sure. Okay, next up, we have Go Green Geek. Welcome to the stage. Round of applause, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Emma, and today I'm going to introduce you to Go Green Geek's urban food, eco-friendly aquaponics food production in modern cities. So this is our team. Uh, we are all part of the scientific community and we are all following the sustainable development goals. So modern cities are facing food quality crisis and some of the main problems evolve around good, food, good quality food is expensive and we still don't know its origin. Long distance transport leaves large carbon footprint. Health issues are raised due to bad food habits and agriculture is uncertain due to climate change. So our solution is the urban garden concept consisting of a hardware and a software. The hardware is user-friendly and home integrated, allowing and doesn't need a lot of um, money and time investment, while the software allows you to remotely control your system and gives you data, statistics, and advisory services. So this is the designer solution itself. Uh, it consists of a transparent fish tank and shelving with integrated LED lights and fiberglass tubs for holding your food and vegetables. How does it all work? Everything is based on aquaponics and indoor farming while uh, being made out of recycled and reused materials and being energy efficient. The hardware itself is fully developed and we're working on developing the small one and the container one. So our app that will allow you to remotely control your system and food process, uh, its roadmap until 2024 is backend development and frontend development and first 50 customers and then AI integration and food trackability. Our business model is a hybrid between B2B and B2C with the software solution because we want our customers to be connected through an app while not necessarily having the, the hardware itself. We are pre-revenue and pre-seed and we are seeking for an in, in, we're seeking for investment. We're seeking for investment. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for the presentation. Super speedy, but yeah, we got it. But we got it. No worries. Um, simple question: Can you tell me, like, how do you differ from the competition? Because there are a lot of urban garden like this. Let's say. Tell me, like, the main difference that you uh, have. So the main difference is that nobody, for now, is market is on market uh, to give you an tailor-made aquaponics system, and there our main competition is hydroponic system. While hydroponic system uses a lot of chemicals that we don't use because we get all the nutrients from the fish. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks for this presentation. Sure. What kind of fish do you use? What kind, what of? kind of fish do you have in the uh, Freshwater fish. Okay, so locally sourced or? <laughs> locally sourced, everything is locally sourced and yeah. Okay, yeah. and where do you produce the, the whole system? Uh, in Zagreb. Oh. We are centered in Zagreb and we're producing the, we have the people that are for producing everything that is used mm -hmm. with recycled and reused materials yeah. and smart materials also. And then we are selling it. The hardware. How long does it take to produce one unit? Mm, around, uh, I would say, uh, two weeks, maybe. Okay, around, so in yeah. case of a uh, large number of orders? Well, for now, we didn't have a large number of <laughs> orders. For now, we're just but trying to sell it. But we have sold 15 units so far, okay. uh, mainly in educational purposes. But we are trying to target the larger consumership. Thanks. Thank you. I always ask the, quite the finance question. So first, how much does it cost? How much does it cost? The, uh, the system itself costs around 10,000 kuna. Uh, 10,000 kuna, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got mixed up with 1,500 euros, something like that. Yeah. And how does that compare to the com competition? As I don't know the competitive landscape like for that. Um, a similar well, we are the only ones that get that you get from whom you get the home system. A lot of people are using it like in the commercial purposes and they have like, gar I mean, not gardens, but uh, large garages for it. And we're mm -hmm. the only ones that produce home for, for homes and for your apartments. So no one else does it as home, as a home system at all? No, for, no, for now, no. Wow. Okay. For now, cool. no. Um, and also, um, so you have an app and I'm guessing same question um, as others as well. Like one off is great, but is there any subscription? Oh, we don't have revenue? an app yet. That's why we're here. We're starting a software. But yeah. in the sense of your plans going forward and how you plan to monetize, is, is it just the one-time purchase or is there more? Well, uh, it will be a one-time purchase, but then you get different packages of it. So like premium subscription and not premium subscri subscription. Which are? What are premium and not premium? Uh, like a premium one has um, not more data, but it allows you more advices. It allows you like to get your seats uh, rechanged and you get the full package. And while the other ones, they don't. And the cost between the two? Excuse How me? How much does each of those cost? The system itself? No, the subscription. The subscription? Oh, oh that's still in planning. We don't have that plan yet. Okay. And is the system for indoors use only, or can it be outside? It can be outside, but its main purpose is in indoors. Okay, but I, then I guess it depends on the climate, so the country. Of course, actually. yeah, okay. of and course. But your, uh, targeted markets are. Well, for now, we're targeting everyone that wants to be in the sustainability business and have. Geographically speaking. Um, uh, well, young families. Let's but, say. But, yeah, but in geography, Croatia, the region. Oh, Croatia. Yeah. Excuse me, Croatia. Yes. Oh, Croatia. And you think that 10,000 kunas is, uh, in terms of price, I mean, is it. Uh... Yeah, it is a lot. But you, let's say uh, you get you can get one ton, of sal uh, one ton of salad in a container of 350 square meters. You can okay. get 10 tons of salad. <laughs> okay. Yeah. In uh, what time? In a year. In a year. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Quick question: What plants can you can you grow there? Well, we tried with microgreens, we tried with chili peppers, we tried with strawberries and with tomatoes, and everything was working just fine. So everything eatable. <laughs> what about maintenance? Like when you when, once you sell it, you know, uh, maybe the fish are going to die, or I mean, some pla some some part of the system like breaks. Like, do you have any? plans for also maintenance too is in part, is yeah, part of, of course the subscription. We, uh, we want with our system, we want to integrate that alarm part. So when it something went, goes wrong, you can fix it on your own while waiting for us to come and say what and how can be fixable. And if it needs something to, uh, and if, if it needs changing, we will change it for you. Thanks. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you very much. Go Green Thank you. Geek. 
So you get an aquarium and you get microgreens. Perfect. Okay, just making sure that the judges have time because we're going to bring out our third one and number 15 overall, Smart Order. Round of applause for Smart Order, please. Hi, we are Ozren and Tomislav. Allow us to introduce you to our vision of digital hospitality. Let me tell you a story about Alex. It's a busy Friday night. She decides to take her friends to a pub for burgers and beer to a place without smart order. First, they wait a while to receive the menu. Then, they wait a while to place an order. And after they are finished and ready to leave, again, they have to wait to pay. Meanwhile, the waiter has lost a couple of pounds of running back and forth. Now, let's meet Alex, and this time she decides to use smart order. So, she does all of the process again, but this time she uses her, her smartphone only. So, she scans, she orders, and she pays. Now, they can continue having their uh, beautiful evening, and waiters can get their tips. So, what is a smart order? Smart order is a um, web-based web pl platform for contactless and frictionless payment. Um, better experience for both uh, customers and businesses. Businesses such as hotels, restaurants, uh, coffee shops, and similar. And why would you use smart order? Well, there is uh, zero paper wasted. There are zero apps to download, which means it's user friendly and it's easily scalable and easy to integrate. It takes about 48 hours to get the system fully up and running. So what's our business model? There are more than 13,000 potential clients in Croatia only. Our service fee is 0.5% for the traffic going through our platform. And why are we here? Well, we need you to help us increase our business across the world. And now, all of you can have the same experience as Alex. Feel free to scan the QR code. Thank you. Yeah, I can go with the first one. So if I'm not mistaken, you have to onboard each and every single restaurant for it, right? To, you have to onboard every restaurant to have the ability to. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. correct. So there is a lot of footwork there. Uh, how do you, how, how is your uh, perspective with like sales and marketing because you'll have to go restaurant to restaurant for a lot be before it becomes ubiquitous, right? So we first started locally. Uh, so we started from our whole town, spreading across other towns. So we are doing this ourselves. Uh, so that's why we need uh, good investors who can support us in uh, basically uh, expanding our business across Croatia and maybe other countries as well. Have you onboarded already some some businesses? Uh, we have a couple of uh, restaurants in Croatia, in uh, Labin, uh, in our hometown. And basically the next step is just uh, going to other uh, pubs. But for that, we need to um, implement better, better sales and marketing. Uh, my question is from the, the ones that you implemented it, uh, how many or how high is the percentage of people using that versus traditional ordering? Uh, so it's at the moment, so uh, we, the, the first restaurants who, who started using it, uh, they started using it like a few weeks ago. And uh, from that statistical data, we have like 30% uh, at the beginning. But uh, we kind of like assume that uh, because at first uh, people have to get used to it. So what we are thinking about is um, the next five, 10 years is a digital uh, uh, era. So we expect that th those numbers are gonna get much higher. Okay, 30% isn't bad. Um, and the payment, so the customer does the payment with his credit card, Apple Pay, with what inside the app? So everything, so card, Apple Pay, Google Pay. There is also Revolut, you okay. can have click and pay. Um, also Kex Pay, so okay. you can just also click and pay. And 0.5% so is just your markup, um, or is any cards is above that? Uh, so restaurants, uh, businesses can choose between any uh, payment gateway uh, out there. 
Um, and in average, uh, in the beginning, when the register just starts, it's around 1.5, 1, 1. 1.6 uh, percentage. And plus yeah, so it's, it's your 0 0.5, the credit card, whatever it is, uh, payment provider was, yours is 0.5, this is 1.5, so it's 2% altogether. Yep. Correct. Okay, thank you. Did you do market research to see if there are any similar apps out there? Uh, yeah, we did. Uh, in Croatia, at the moment, there are like, plenty uh, apps out there in the restaurants, but mostly they don't offer uh, order and pay. They just have like PDF or screenshot of the menu, or they're just going to the like website, so you can see there. Uh, but out there, uh, there are some startups in uh, Great Britain, I think, uh, and I think they got around 500 million pounds Series A, something like that, uh, last year. So I think there's uh, plenty room for, for us as well. Thank you. I can tell you right away that there's an app, uh, app in Amsterdam. I was there two weeks ago and one of the bars had the same thing, uh, but just as an input. Uh, the other thing, so you offer this both to bars and restaurants, right? So do you think there's a difference between ordering in a bar where you know which drink you're going to drink and then in restaurants, usually the guests want some more information about the food, so they usually want to chat with the waiter. Um, yeah, so there are some uh, businesses that like to have communication, direct communication with the clients. So basically at this point, they're not going to be our customers, but we are focusing on those uh, who need our help, like uh, huge pizza places or huge patisseries, like who can't really handle all the traffic coming in and out. So that's where we come to like to play. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I can do one more if you have one. Um, so what's your uh, strategy for getting more customers other than like outside of Croatia knocking on doors? Or like how, where do you see the potential of growing further? So uh, we first need to uh, get our sales and marketing up and running. So Croatia is going to be like a test environment uh, to see how the product works. Um, and yeah, then basically we need to came up with a plan uh, and attack Europe, UK and US where the digital era is much closer than here. Thank you. Thank you very much to Smart Order. Well done, guys. Thank you. So from boats to food to ordering food, the next name has me intrigued. Can we welcome to the stage our final startup of the 16? Magic Forest. Round of applause, please. Uh, <clears throat> Hello. My name is Dushan, and we are Magic Forest. We are the next generation carbon offsetting platform. We turn forests from liability to assets. Companies have to offset their footprint. And they are required by the regulators, by their customers, uh, by uh, the general opinion in general. On the other hand, forest owners don't have any financials until they cut the forest. And our solution is to connect them. And we want to create a new asset class uh, that will actually turn the forest from liabilities into assets. Uh, the carbon offset market size is around 1.1 billion US dollars and it is supposed to grow to around 190 billion in 2030. And Europe is the largest single market. Uh, so our value proposition is that we do carbon offsets but with an added value. So we want to uh, incentivize the forest owners, give them extra earnings and also preserve natural ecosystems and rebuild them with our uh, autonomous drone fleet. How it works, the forest owner uh, registers on our system and gets initial offering, the carbon calculation and unique uh, land ID. Then Magic Forest calculates the carbon tokens using blockchain and the polluting company actually uh, registers through our platform or API for their accounting and just one clicks the solution. So there is competition uh, in the carbon offsetting uh, market, of course, but our differences are that we use uh, uh, blockchain to secure safe transactions and transparency, and also we create new assets. 
Our revenue in last 12 months is around 15,000 euro. We are part of Forest, uh, part of Fil Rouge Accelerator, and now we ask 450,000 euro to build the platform and uh, fastly scale. Our team is diverse. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and we are Magic Forest. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I just noticed it's two minutes. Impressive for everyone to make it. Um, so it's a really big business. I know all the big companies, including tech, they're offsetting forest and like renting forests in Indonesia and so on. So you're basically doing this through an app or a platform. Uh, obvious question, why do you need blockchain for that? Uh, so yes, there is now a big issue with transparency in the whole offsetting market so actually this is really a big thing and we are from a scientific background so for us it's even more visible let's say that now a lot of the estimates are really questionable um, so actually what we want to do is to use blockchain where anybody who buys it can check the throughout the whole procedure what was happening from the beginning and the other thing is that we don't want, uh, we want to build like a, a main source of truth where actually we can cooperate with other uh, offsetting platforms and we give that land ID so nobody can uh, actually apply to our platform and also to Vera or any of other companies. Uh, thanks for your presentation. So you uh, plan to work with uh, local Croatian forest owners or also go abroad? Uh, also, yes. So we plan for now, we will stay where the money is coming from. That's where we want to rebuild uh, the ecosystems. So we want community ecosystems. Okay. So where actually the companies are, that's where we want to invest. And then we'll scale to other countries. So Germany will do it in Germany. And again, we come back to the transparency part. If it's in a third world countries, of course, it's cheaper. But I mean, if you pay something one and a half dollar or 50 cents, I mean, you really know that nothing will be happening there. And do you plan to work with private forest owners or also with the state? So with Hrvatske Shuma, for instance? Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a legal question. So <laughs> Europe is a bit different than uh, the, the rest of the world. But um, so uh, in Croatia, at least a big portion of the forests are governmental. But we still find a really good response for private, from private owners. owners. But uh, moving into, let's say, DAX area, so the, the German-speaking area, it increases to more than 50% in private. And in this way, we already have uh, a lot of requests because uh, big landowners see a lot of uh, advancement in this part so that they can have their asset and also get the return from the uh, carbon offsetting. And at the end, of course, we expect very high increase in both. And also this opens it as investment. So this is what we want to do that actually, uh, if, you, if you are a company and you offset for 2021, but actually if you buy the forest, you can offset for several years and still have an asset. Otherwise you offset and you have nothing. Yeah. Thanks very much. Thank you for the, for the presentation. I like the, <clears throat> I like the project. So the idea is that I am a corporation. I log in in the platform. I make an order of, I don't know, I have to offset X amount. And then you're going to connect in the land owner, then the forest owner, and then he's going to plant the trees. But you mentioned that drones are going to do that. Uh, so no, there is two models. So yeah. one is with planting. So we can plant a new forest. And this is why we developed the autonomous fleet. And uh, it goes really fast. So can do, do like hundreds of hectares in, in days, uh, whereas other technologies cannot. But we also include forest owners that already have a developed forest because old forest is the one that integrates the most carbon. And actually, it's not limited to forest. We can do marshlands, protected areas. You have lots of protected areas that have problems with finances, and they sit on huge natural capital. Capital. Who's doing their actual planting at the, end, at the end of the day? Because there are companies similar to yours that are, <clears throat> in order to boost like the local economy, they're going to hire people from the lo local area and then they're going to ask them to plant the trees, you know? So is it something that you're going to consider in the future or not really? We are developing, the for us, we are developing our fleet and we also have a normal planting. So we do have also greenhouses with plants if you want to take, you know, bigger ones for events or PR. Uh, but uh, yeah, we don't, in, uh, we don't cooperate like with private uh, landowners to plant plantations. As I say, we are from scientific backgrounds, so we believe in actually natural ecosystems, not in plantations. Yeah, okay, thanks. Um, so how far are you with the product? Because I've noticed you just said you do a couple of things. So you plant new ones, you rent out old ones, and you also have your own greenhouses. So, 
so we are already in revenue, so around uh, 50,000 in the last 12 months. Just, is that your revenue, or is yes. that all the revenue that went through the company? Or is that what's left, or so the, when That's they... the total revenue from uh, one part is from the drone C, sitting with drones, and the other is connecting the companies to, uh, to forest owners. And what the platform enables is that it can be one to many in both mm -hmm. ways. Got it, but is it the 50,000, uh, so when it goes through you, is it the carbon offset that they paid or just your cut of that? Ah, no, that, that's, uh, sorry, uh, that, that's uh, our cut. Thank oh, you. okay, thank no, you. Yeah, the total, um, yeah, sorry. I think you got the idea, you made 50,000. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Cool, thank you very much to Magic Forest. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant, good. Okay, judges, you are free to go and discuss and you have 40 minutes to make a decision. You can reach out to the judges from yesterday as well if you want to chat about yesterday's teams. I know some of you have been here the two days, but you have 40 minutes to come up with the winners. Yeah. So please make your way off. I'm going to grab the microphone from you, though. Thank you.